be presenting this presentation. Uh, so good afternoon, everyone. Uh, so I start Rajasthan basically is the uh, is the branded program for startups in the state, which is being managed by the Department of IT and Communication. Uh, and it is uh, it is the umbrella program of complete startup ecosystem in the state. And uh, you know, next slide. Come on, can you go back? Can am I? Do I have the control of the presentation? Yes, sir. You do have. To. Okay. Have to uh, I'm actually Rahul Singh ka screen chal raha hai. I, I'm unable to move to the next slide. Uh, just a minute, sir, I will just uh, stop sharing it and you can reshare it again. Uh, everything is managed electronically through an umbrella portal called the iStart portal. Uh, under the portal, it is a holistic solution, last end-to-end uh, -end solution that provides support to startups right from uh, the deployment of the policy to incubation to funding to industry network to connect and 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 anything that a startup may require to excel in, in building a better company and a better idea just to give you an overview of the program the program has almost six state-owned incubation centers uh two uh, just recently on the 20th of august we have launched uh, three incubators which were in uh, uh bikaner Kota and, Ch and Churu. Uh, and on the next month, we'll be formally launching the Jodhpur and Pali incubators. And that would overall cover the nine divisional educational hubs of the state. We have over 1800 plus startups uh, as well. We, we, we have over 1000 curated startups. Uh, and I will dwell a little bit more in future what curated startup means. Among the funding that we provide to startups, which is, you know, sustenance allowance, which is a grant of 1 lakh 20. The Honorable CM also has uh, announced the COVID relief grant, which is of a grant of 5 lakhs. We provide a marketing assistance support of over 10 lakhs. And then we have a matching fund of called the Techno Fund, which is a funding up to the tune of uh, 25 lakhs, depending on the curate scorecard. Among the various uh, startup program that we are running, we have almost over 120 incubated across the division, across the state on incubators. Multiple outreach workshops that we have done, many, this is, this. these numbers at the bottom are the results of the last seven to eight months of work. Uh, we've done over 11 division workshops, seven investor meets. We have a very robust uh, I Start School program, which I'll talk in later, and over 17 plus, you know, students that are part of the institutions and multiple workshops that have been done. And obviously, boot camps and acceleration go without saying. Uh, next slide. All right. Just a little overview of this. So uh, just to give you an idea, uh, these are the various incubators that have opened up and the ones that are about to come. It is imperative to highlight to the jury that uh, all these incubation processes, right from application to incubation management to mentorship is being done through the iStart portal. A startup or an entrepreneur or a youth who wants to start his own business does not physically need to reach out to us. Everything is being managed through a robust portal where once he registers, he's able to then, uh, when he applies for, the for his registration, once it gets approved, any other requirement that may come is done electronically through the portal. Every startup in the ecosystem that has been incubated is mapped to a mentor. We have dedicated mentors sitting across the state, along with a dedicated department of IT, ACP, and programmers sitting and managing and supporting the program at a district level as well. Uh, Jaipur was the one that was the first, that is the hub and spoke model, which is the techno hub. Kota just recently got opened. Udaipur, Bharatpur, Bikan, and Churu recently are active. Jodhpur, Pali, and Ajmer should become open by the end of next month as well. Next slide. This is just to give you a little bit journey of the program and how we've evolved as a program. Conventionally, most startup programs are typically housed with the industry department of any state in Rajasthan or maybe some of the more uh, some of the more tech states uh, or tech oriented states. Those programs are typically housed with the department of IT. Having said that, being housed in department of IT does not mean that they're all IT based startups. Conventionally, we have a mixed uh, bag of agri, uh, social sector, uh, artisan tourism and tech startups as well. 
Yeah, just to give you a little journey of the program, uh, the program started yeah. in 2015. Uh, Rajasthan was probably one of the first few states to have actually come out with a startup policy way before Startup India came into existence. Uh, in 2000, uh, the program was formally launched in uh, by the Department of IT. It was rechristened in 2017 by the Department of IT by the iStart program. And thereon going forth, the program has progressed by leaps and bounds. We are also happy to say that we are the is the West Zonal Hub for WEP program under Niti Aayog as well. We have a virtual incubation program as well. We have a smooth startup program. We have a rural startup program. Uh, we're now getting into drones and uh, drones as well. Uh, next slide. Like the basis of this program lies its foundation and four basic pillars. The policy, obviously. Uh, we are currently governed by the 2015 policy. Hopefully, if uh, by the next month we'll have our 2000, 20,000, our next 2022 20, policy coming out as well by next month. And you know, all the funding support that the program offers is governed by the policy. Uh, we have an incubation program, uh, which is the state owned incubators. And also, we are now collaborating with the 75 all universities that exist in Rajasthan and getting their incubators onto our common platform as well. Outreach and awareness plays a very important role of trying to provide this youth of Rajasthan access to investors, access to better idea, showcasing, uh, showcasing, productizing their solutions so that they can get better networking. Uh, we obviously support a lot of events on the ground as well. And the most important part, which we believe as a program is the procurement model. Uh, we are governed by the RTPP Act. And as part of the Act, uh, we have been able to uh, amend the Act where we can give startups work orders of the tune of one crore across six categories. And the most important new a revelation, revelation that we have done is last year, we launched uh, uh, through our eBazaar portal, startups based on their curate program, scorecard can get work orders up to the tune of 15 lakhs. Uh, and I would like to state this out here, everything has been done electronically with no manual intervention at all. Uh, next slide. The portal itself, it's a robust portal. It has a dedicated dashboard. All stakeholders can leverage this portal to interact with the ecosystem whether it's entrepreneurs, teachers, mentors, self-help groups, FPOs, product companies, individuals, and SMEs as well. Complete partner on onboarding through academic institutions and venture catalysts and accelerators. Uh, startups can directly coordinate with the, through this platform with the government and government officials. Everything is done electronically through the central system in a time-bounded manner. And more importantly, something that we're very proud of in the program is a curate program. Uh, a curate program, which I'll dwell a little bit later on down. Next slide. Some of the fundings that the program currently provides, obviously, uh, as I mentioned earlier, we have a sustenance allowance, we have a seed fund, a marketing assistance fund, techno fund, which is a matching fund. And more recently, last year, the Honorable CM had launched the COVID grant fund for startups in Rajasthan that had suffered losses due to COVID. Uh, next slide. The curate mechanism. This is, an, uh, this is a very interesting mechanism, which is very unique to Rajasthan. All startups that register in the platform uh, uh, how do you evaluate them in terms of that? How do you value these startups? So we have a, we have a third party team that actually eva uh, evaluates the startup when the startup or a youth applies on the program, he submits his pitch deck, bases that pitch deck and obviously a constructive conversation that we have with the entrepreneur. Startups are evaluated and given a scorecard across uh, 280 odd points. And basis that scorecard, uh, various benefits of the startup typically get aligned. And the idea of the curate program is twofold. One, to provide a uh, as on constructive criticism to the startup on where you stand, show him the mirror, and then help him build a roadmap for every four months, how he can move up the ladder, handhold him, mentor him, and give him those bootcamp supports so that after every four months, he must have moved up the ladder and done some progress in his uh, in his in his in building a better entrepreneurial venture of his own, and basis with that, it is club with various investor meets that we organize so that the startup can help raise more funds. And just to let you know, there are over thousand plus startups that are curated so far, and curation is done after every four months now. Next slide. Uh, some of the incubators that we've recently opened, obviously the left on the left you see the big building is a techno hub. Uh, we also have. Uh, various support and smaller branches and recently opened in Bikaner and Churu. Uh, Kota obviously is also another hub that we're opening. The Techno Hub comes with its own citizen-centric uh, digital museum as well. 
uh, we have partnered with various institutions for the betterment of the ecosystem as well. Next slide. Uh, sorry for interruption, sir. Can you please yeah. conclude your presentation in one or I two will, minutes? I'll wrap it up in the next one minute. Uh, yeah. As I mentioned, procurement is something very important for the state. Uh, a lot of startups come to us and say that they do not want to get funding. They would rather have validation by giving product procurement by the government. So this is a process that we've been able to execute. A lot of startups have also been beneficial of this procurement model. Uh, challenge for change is something new where we crowdsource innovative solutions for citizens, uh, for government, government purposes. And we've given a lot of these orders up to the tune of one crore to innovative ideas as well. Next slide. School startup program. This is something that we started last year uh, to promote innovation and entrepreneurship in schools. It gives me great pleasure to say that in the matter of seven months, months 30,000 students have registered uh, and out of which we recently just concluded season one where students were given work orders, uh, cash awards up to the 41 lakhs between school and rural startups as well. And this program will go into season two as well. And these startups, school startups that have been identified will be taken, will be sent through an acceleration program and then onto a roadshow as well. Next. Rural startup to allow rural ideas because the state is very clear that entrepreneurship should not be limited to urban cities. We've actually built a program which has gone into tier three, tier four cities and trying to identify rural ideas that have rural implication. And out of these 542, 540 startups were registered. We've also been able to give uh, awards just recently on the 19th and 20th to startups in the sector as well. Next slide. Some of the success stories, you know, because I think nothing beats this, nothing beats success. Some of these startups have gone a part of the program, whether they've been able to raise funds, they've been able to move up the ladder. Uh, Med Delivery has raised 12 crores from us. We've got a decoder that was in the Y Combinator. Uh, a lot of these startup success stories are just the epitome to show that Rajasthan and the iStart program is doing really, really well. Next. Some of the awards yeah, that we have won as well recently. Uh, just to bring to the uh, to the jury some of the award, we are also a recipient of the e governance award as well as well. Right. Next slide. I think with that we end the presentation. I'm happy to address any queries and questions that you may have, ma'am. Uh, nothing much to ask because you are being rated by others also. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I will. I will take no, no, that Curate as. doesn't. Curate doesn't uh, evaluate them. It the startups only. I, I, I will take that as a mat. I will take this as a fact that I must have done a good job. <laughs> well, if you think doing a good job itself is rewarding, there is no reward. Absolutely. Doing a Absolutely. good job is everybody. Anyway, I, totally I, have, I, I have nothing much to ask, but okay. uh, one thing which uh, I'm curious to know so. that uh, how do you judge? It is such an initial stage that you are doing good or uh, you are progressing well without in absence of any survey or study done on this. So to answer your question, sir, uh, uh, impact assessment of work has started, but the epitome of success or how do I say that the program is actually making an impact on the ground? There are two, three steps we evaluate, sir. One, uh, when we open incubation centers on the ground, how much catchment and ideas that are coming up to uh, the mentoring and the progress of the startups that have got funding. So startups that have got funding from us and how many of them have actually gone ahead and raised second round of funding from the market. You can't get a better validation of program that if an entrepreneur has got funding from us and then gone and raised investment from a private investor, series A or series B. So I can very confidently tell you that out of the 200 plus startups that we may have funded in various capacities, at least 50% uh, of 50 startups of those have raised pre-series A over a million dollars plus. That's a third party evaluation. Uh, Ma'am, curate plays a very important role. <laughs> I always say that the market will validate the pro progress of the program. And, 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 and more importantly, it's because of this success that we've been able to go on to move to other programs, which is on school and which is on rural. The government is very, very clear that rural entrepreneurs must be given an opportunity to build better ideas, to handhold them, because they are the ones that are going to give uh, solutions that are actually applicable on the rural level. 
I hope that answers your question, sir. Uh, partly, yes. Uh, the thing is that, you see, in the absence of a comprehensive study over a period of implementation of the program, it's difficult to, you know, justify. Although you are doing good work, so you are getting funding flow. But that is not enough. The lots of fund providers take risk and uncertainty. There is no doubt about it. Sure. Not I, 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 I So that's the part. Anyway, excellent job. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I have no specific questions. Because uh, basically, basically, you have done a portal, right? <laughs> where all the uh, startups have come up and you are providing all kinds of facilities. So that portal is definitely working well. Right? I don't think it needs any third party evaluation, but uh, so you, if you are presenting the portal, then you have done an excellent job. But about the outcome of the start work, that is something the time will take. Thank you. And ma'am, except the third party, except the second funding, which is kind of a, a you know a validation of your uh, trust in them. And one of the things I would also like to express to the jury that some of the new interventions that we're also doing, which is a integrating the banking solutions of the banking partners with to our program. That's one. And two, uh, there are very serious level conversations that Startup India is having with us to integrate. They want to integrate their portal with us. Because you know, one thing which, uh, you know, I get interviewed because we had uh, last session also lots of presentations from Rajasthan, especially as regards to integration, I integration. So, so many integrations happening, but still integrations coming. So how is it? <laughs> Sir, I'll tell you something. The reason is because uh, there are so many different domains that are coming up every day. State governments and private entities are coming out with new portals every single day. Mm -hmm. and, and at the end of the day, multi, you know, and how do you provide the uh, youth of Rajasthan or youth of India a single platform rather than going to multiple platforms? And how do you validate? Because every time a user may not want to fill in all the data. And, and Rajasthan is very, similar, is very unique in a sense because we have a single sign-on entity where single sign-on will allow you access to all government services where you don't need to feed any information again and again. All right. so because of that, I think uh, this process is a never-ending process, sir. It will go on and on and on. That and also has been done by your department, yes, the single sign-on. Department uh, of IT has been the fraud runner. I think uh, our principal secretary believes that your cyber pilgrimage can never be complete if you don't visit Rajasthan. Mm -hmm. Good, good. Right. Someday integration will take place totally. <laughs> <laughs> I, I look forward to that as well, sir. Pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Have a good day, everyone. Bye bye. You too. About, uh, uh, about online monitoring uh, uh, of ESIC medical reimbursement claims. So, yeah. So, yeah. So the current scenario, scenario watch, like the, the existing scenario watch, uh, because the system of bill claims are there. Uh, uh, under ESIC, we claim uh, primary and secondary uh, uh, care uh, claims. Uh, the funds which we go, get from the uh, ESIC government of India. So uh, the, the scenario watch, uh, the, there was lack of transparency. Uh, on average, we used to uh, reimburse claims of uh, around like 10 to 14,000 claims in a year. That's uh, last three year data. So uh, the, the, the problem with the bill claims was uh, lack of tra transparency, which was like uh, the time taken uh, in dispersal of the claims was very high. It used to be like 20, 25 days, 50 days, or uh, no, actually no uh, tracking of claims, where it is, how it is, who is doing what. There was no such system which can be tracked uh, online. So, and uh, the, the issue, in clearance of bills, document missing were also there because uh, 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 when, uh, when a person uh, uh, submits the claim, there might be a, a, a chance that some documents may be missing. So that issue was also there. And uh, the, the, the second scenario was, uh, it's a complicated process actually. So the, the, the person, when he, he, he submits the bill, he actually submits the seven additional documents along with the bill. And he gets, uh, offline acceptance of receipt, which is not very uh, uh, frequent at the dispensary level. The, the third scenario was uh, long waiting time to get claims. So it, it used to take a lot of time because uh, the, the process was completely offline, no online record of data, no uh, 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 real time tracking. 
so they were uh, like there were multiple visits of the uh, the, the uh, ip insured persons to get their claims the the fourth uh, issue with the uh, uh, the existing system was that the data is solely offline no scope of analysis like uh, uh, from where we get we are getting most of the claims which uh, hospitals are claiming most uh, in which months the claims are most we, we did not have any kind of that analysis and the third point was no scope of trend analysis we, we could not uh, do any kind of trend analysis so that we could find at which industry, which kind of industries or which kind kind of factories are seeing which kind of uh, disease or accidents anything like that the the, the final reason the, 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 the last reason was uh, no mechanism to penalize in case of delay of, of reimbursement because officers were responsible but they were not time bound and time bound uh, i mean to say time bound is that they were not uh, penalized or being rewarded to reimburse claim as early as possible. So the provisions of uh, Chhattisgarh Lok Seva Guarantee at the name was not being implemented in its uh, true nature. Yeah, so these were needs we, we, when we started doing the analysis, what are the gaps? So these were needs which we found out during, uh, during our uh, uh, process analysis. The, the first was to reduce the documents needed to claim reimbursement because uh, nowadays uh, everything is online so we wanted to reduce the, the, the document burden on the, uh, uh, on the on the on the person who is claiming the bill the the second need which we found out was bring the old offline database into a new online database i meant to say that earlier the data was the, the, the data of last 5 10 years was in complete files wo uh, bundle uh, and there was no uh, digital record of those data uh, the third one was uh, the to redesign the document submission and disbursement process so we, we wanted to redesign the complete process start from the, the the dispensary level till the ceo level of the esic the fourth one was to uh, design a new online qr code or unique code based tracking system so that when uh, the, the bill bill uh, passage a certain uh, label like l1 l2 l3 so uh, the person gets a uh, notification that, oh, my document has uh, cleared this uh, stage or is, uh, is, is being dispersed at the, this stage. And the, there was also a need to develop a website and app so that the, the tracking can be done uh, in real time. Yeah. Uh, there was also no uh, earlier, there was no dashboard for the director or the ESIC so that they, they, they can track all the bills that how many days the, the bills are taking to get reimbursed how many days uh, the, the bills are pending at what table so th this was also a need that we will develop a dashboard kind of thing so that the, the ceo and the uh, director both can uh, monitor from there also there was the, the need was to bring uh, the esic medical bill reimbursement claims under the chhattisgarh lok seva guarantee and so that the the the, uh, the bills will be uh, reimbursed within 14 days or 20 days something like that there was also no communication system earlier so we we thought that we will also uh, uh, develop the two two way communication system between the the, the uh, ips and the, the, the government so that uh, if there's a files are missing some documents are missing that the, the sms can be sent to them and they can be uh, asked to come to the office and uh, submit those documents we also thought we'll uh, we'll uh, introduce a mis system to uh, do trend analysis on also we can integrate with the IHS industrial health and safety data so that we can find out which industries are uh, 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 facing which kind of problem like a, a certain kind of industry may face certain kind of problem and another kind of industry may uh, face certain kind of problems and it's the worker who face the, uh, the, the problem who face the uh, burden of those problems. So yeah, so what solutions we have developed, uh, we have listed in this uh, slide. So we merged the old database into the complete new database. Uh, old database data was transported, transposed to the new database to ensure continuity so that they are not missing any data, uh, uh, any earlier data. Uh, we developed a, a, a mobile app and web-based claim uh, submission system so that the complete transparency will be maintained. We also, uh, uh, what we did was a standardized data collection so that uh, you don't need to fill any data manually. So 80% fields 
have exhaustive drop down lists the bills uh, claim system was brought under the lok seva guarantee adhinayam so that uh, uh, there will be complete tra transparency and those officers who will be doing good there will be uh, uh, they will be rewarded and those officers who will be uh, uh, doing uh, uh, bad will be penalized under this act uh, we designed the, the mis process system in the back end so that we can do a trend analysis we can make policies based on those data we automated the payments uh, and information system so that uh, the bills once the bills gets uh, get the, the, the approved it can be dispersed uh, using the online uh, portal the last one was the database of new system will be used for bringing down accidents so that we can find out which industries are having more accidents more kind of uh, uh, occupational disease so these kind of uh, uh, policies we can we can make in future so yeah the process is like that the, uh, the, the first we start from first ip their family members or hospitals claim the, their bill and bills at the dispensary the data entry operators check the bills and feed in the system and generate qr codes on the uh, registered mobile number they also get a register, uh, registration number uh, which with uh, replicate the, the the qr code the dios forward like uh, uh, forward it to it to the concerned dios the the third uh, the third step in this process is that dio checks the claim verify it and this was the amount if the claim is below 30000 if the claim amount is uh, beyond 30000 they forward it to the director yes i yes uh, the director checks it and this uh, this was the amount the third process the th third step the fourth step is if the claim amount is uh, greater than 2 lakhs the director forwards it to the ceo esis and the ceo checks it and this was the amount in in the given bank account so the complete at any stage the ip can track that at what stage my bills are pending at and how many days it will take to get, get reimbursed so they also uh, get a notification whenever uh, his uh, or her bills uh, cross a uh, 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 level so uh, uh, these are the expected outcomes because the the the, the, the process the system the new system is still in uh, trial so we, these are expected outcomes so the, the, the reduced time for this disbursal disbursal from 25 50 days to 10 15 days which will benefit 8 lakhs registered workers and 24 lakhs of their dependents considering three dependents for each worker so it will benefit around 32 lakhs people uh, reduced number of visits to the residency to get claims pehle unko thoda documents missing hote the they used to come to the dispensary multiple times now which will come down the third expect, third expected outcome is that analysis of data to bring down accidents so that uh, 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 we will uh, do the analysis a uh, trend analysis ki kaun hospital mein jahan accident zyada ho rahe and will uh, bring down the accidents and occupational disease in chhattisgarh uh these are uh, like how it can be replicated in other states or the other departments or uh, other schemes so because it's totally it focused with emphasis on easing the process it can be easily replicated in other schemes of the labor department or uh, other uh, states ka ESIS, ESIS. Uh, process aimed at compressing multiple forms because we are compressing multiple uh, we are bringing down 17 forms to one form all the stakeholders uh, stand to benefit be it uh, insured person be it government be it industries so everyone will benefit from uh, this entire system uh, they the APIs can easily be shared with uh, the departments if they are willing to adopt, adopt the process. It's not really com uh, a very complicated process. It, the APIs can uh, easily be shared with them and uh, uh, they can adopt the, the, the entire system. Thank you. Thank you. That, that's all on my side. Thank you for giving me this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. It's, this is one of the most neglected area that you have attended to, especially keeping the ordeals of the labor community. Especially, I'm aware of that to see the medical claim that a labor would like to, uh, you know, the labor has to go through hell of a lot of procedural hurdles and his capacity of not able to handle the bureaucratic hassles has been reduced and you made an excellent job making it easy not only by reducing your time but 
right, knowing as to where the things are stuck and ensuring that these uh, laborers who are much deserving time medical uh, relief you are providing in a much easier way. That's excellent job. I must thank you for that. And also that in addition to that, academically also you gained because you identified the most hazardous areas, industries. Uh, so these are one of the things and I must appreciate that. I have nothing to much ask but since you started a good work that keep it going in a, even in a better way. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thanks so much. You are on mute, ma'am. Sorry. Oh, I'm quite impressed with that. Uh, the fact that you know, the rest of the processes are through digital. It's okay. Everybody does it. There is nothing special about it. But you have reduced the forms. There is a process engineering you have invoked. The reducing the form, 17 form to one or a common form, that is a great achievement. That is one thing. But I didn't understand. You said that by data analysis, you could identify the accident and can be reduced. Can you please explain a little bit? I think we do have enough time, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I, I'll answer to that. So basically, so that looks uh, I, different. Yeah, I, I was asked by the department, uh, by the secretary, that can you design an uh, online MIS system and accident system? So while doing that, I thought. Uh, where can we get the data? Because industries usually do not report those data. So usually it comes from the, the co-workers, the, the, the uh, labor unions, the trade unions. And the final point, which we thought that where do they go after uh, an accident or after a, a death of any member? Where do they go? So we found out that they go either go, go to the hospital or uh, uh, or to the to, to the burial ground or, or the cremation ground after the death. But where do they go after the accident? So, because they are working in organized sector, they are insured under ESIEC. So they usually come to the ES, ESIC hospitals or okay, ESIC hospitals. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, I understand now. So basically, a bill claim, claim procedure is a byproduct of your accident claim or identifying the accident, not the other way around. Not the not the not the byproduct. Both are inter well, interlinked. No, I, I, are byproduct, interlinked. Uh, they are interlinked. But you started with accidents. And then came up with yes. uh, reforming the bill payment, right? Yes, madam. Yes, so that's great. So you you should be the, by saying bill payment, you are coming into the routine regular category. You know, yes. by saying that yes. how to identify accidents and reduce the number or take preventive action, that is much more alluring. You know, people will think that will be more uh, exciting than doing a bill bill payment <laughs> because bill payment is everybody does. Every government. Uh, department tries to do uh, this, but yes, this one yes, accident yes, thing is more important and very more more uh, required rather. Because that is under process. That's why I I, I did not uh, uh, presented that. But, but that here. is the one. So, but that is the one which is you know um, that is the USP for your project. I'll do that next year if uh, like, uh, I get the chance. Okay, good, good, very good. Thank you, madam. Thank you, sir. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.